Howdy everybody, today I just wanted to give my opinion on the dawn of the rise of the war for the planet of the Kingdom of the Apes. <laughs> I went and saw this movie about a week or so ago, so I gave myself a little bit of time to think about it a little more and just give my opinion on it. Just to start off, I'm going to say I really like this movie. I thought it was actually very good. Um, I would say out of the four movies that we've had so far, obviously this one continues off of the last movie, War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, and I just want to say like the the titles of these movies, um, they're very clever. You know, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn, War, Kingdom. They're very clever. But at what point do we start to confuse them all? Um, I'm getting to that point now where I'm starting to forget which one is which. If the first one wasn't called Rise, I wouldn't know if it was Dawn or Rise, to be completely honest with you. So at this point, I'm just going to call this the fourth movie because this is the fourth movie in the series. And it is the most recent sequel to the third movie, which was War. So I really like this new movie. Uh, I actually liked it more than I thought I would, to be honest with you. I, I'm a firm believer that when a series gets past like its third and its its initial trilogy, normally the company that is in charge of it normally starts to get to the point where it's kind of just like we're just looking for things to throw at the wall, almost like a monkey throwing their feces. It's 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 just let's just throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. Uh, but in this case, I really do think Kingdom was a very good movie uh, just to get it out of the way now. So you don't feel like you have to watch an entire breakdown or anything like that. Not that I'm doing a breakdown, but uh, I'm going to give it an 82 um, percent. I really enjoyed this movie, especially in theaters. It had very good sound. It had very good visuals. In the beginning of the movie, I thought that the CGI was a little bit choppy. Um, and then once the action started getting going, I, I paid less attention to the CGI of the apes themselves and more just at the beautiful sprawling world that they've created with this film uh just for context this movie takes place 300 years after the third movie so caesar and all the apes that you know from the original trilogy are no longer around though they are mentioned uh caesar especially is mentioned quite a bit so there is a connection with those first three movies but i don't think you necessarily have to watch the first three movies uh, i decided to rewatch all of them well I remembered Rise and Dawn. Dawn was my favorite one. Um, I really enjoyed the the ape on ape violence in the uh, second movie. I know that might come off as like racist or something, but I don't intend it to be. I like when the monkeys are fighting each other, though. It's it's more at stake in my opinion. I know like when they fight the humans, it's a big deal and oh my god. But like you kind of already know what it's leading to when the monkeys are evolving as fast as they are and the humans are devolving as fast as they are due to the flu that's going around in the movies. Um, so when it comes to humans in movies like this, I, I hate just like, I hate when the movie focuses so much on the human side of things, because honestly, in the end, the monkeys are going to win. Like they, they, it, that's the point in the entire series. So with that being said, that's where this movie takes place is when the monkeys completely took over the world. Well, from what we know, they took over the world. Uh, there are still some humans sprawled out here and there, but majority of the humans are sick with the flu, um, the flu that caused the monkeys to get smarter and the humans to get stupider, pretty much. It, it devolved the humans, ironically, and evolved the monkeys. This movie does have a few humans in it. Uh, there's actually one main character that is a human, and she's... Um, She's not bad. I, I don't think she was like, you know, like forced into the movie at all. She was more or less like a really good plot point to keep the story going quite a bit. I'm not going to spoil much here, but I will say her character was not that bad. It was the girl who plays Siri in the Witcher series, the Netflix terrible Netflix series. Uh, she's a good actress. I really liked her in this movie. Um, with that being said, I, I also really liked the main characters as well. The main monkey in this one is Noah, and I believe he's going to be the main ape. He's going to be the Caesar of this new series that they're doing. Um, I'm not too sure if I'm out of context here, but from what I've been told and what I've seen, uh, they plan on doing nine movies, I believe, altogether. I don't know if that means they're going to do five more after this one or if they're going to do eight more after this one. But the goal is to have nine, eight movies by the end of this entire thing. With that being said, I think there's going to be a lot of fatigue. I, I think it should just be a fucking TV series at this point. I'm also a firm believer that a TV series flows better when you're trying to do a big series like this but i understand there's more money in the box office for a film i like this movie though the characters were good uh the movie mo mostly focuses on noah the main monkey in this one and he's very relatable he's a. Uh, He's very neutral, but he's also, you know, he's courageous. I like his demeanor a lot. Um, I enjoyed him quite a bit. It focuses on him for majority of it, though. It doesn't really, like, try to make you, like, learn, like, other apes and everything like that. There is one other ape that it wants you to, like, invest your time into, and that would probably be the bad guy of this movie. Um, his name is Proximus Caesar. He's pretty much the, the tyrant 
bad guy Caesar. Somebody, somebody's calling me. Um, he's pretty much the bad guy of this movie. He doesn't show up until about halfway through the movie, though. He's kind of like this like dark presence for the first like majority of the movie. Uh, and then we're introduced to him, and he's actually a really good character. He's really fun to like. He's a good bad guy, you know, where he he's he tries to portray like he's a good guy to the main character, but he's he's got an ulterior motive that's that's a bad guy motive, pretty much. Though I felt like his character, I'm just gonna kind of say it now. There's a kingdom of apes. <laughs> Funny enough, he said the thing. Uh, there's a kingdom that's ran by Proximus Caesar, and he's kind of a tyrant. Um, he's been using the apes as like slaves to open up this big like hangar door uh, that was left behind way back in the past 300 years ago. Um, and it doesn't tell you what's behind the door until the end of the movie more or less. But I felt like it being surrounded by that plot point got kind of stale really quick. Um, and Proximus himself, I felt like didn't get enough time to grow on the on the viewer. Um, I felt like he was kind of there for a chunk of the movie and then he was just gone out of nowhere. And I felt like he was a very interesting character to develop and to see like who he is. Um, unfortunately they kind of go away with him by the end of the movie and it kind of just wastes his potential in my opinion. So if I had to complain about a couple things in this movie, I would say that the pacing is a little bit off sometimes. Uh, it reminded me more so of the war for the planet of the apes, the last movie than it did any of the other movies. I, I, I do feel like, and this might be a hot take, but I do feel like the eight movies are very poorly paced at times, um, with exception being Dawn. I thought Dawn was, that was my favorite one. Um, and I will say Kingdom is my second favorite one after watching, but I, I thought Dawn was really well paced because it felt like the overall arc of Caesar versus Kobo was a very fun arc. It was very cool and it was it was good versus evil, but also with like some in-between gray spots where you could agree with Koba, but you could also agree with Caesar. In this, it felt like it wanted you to have that same dynamic with Proximus Caesar and Noah or like the main characters pretty much. But they unfortunately go away with Proximus so fast that it doesn't really give you time to develop a feeling about him. He's just like this kind of overly aggressive monkey that wants what he wants and he's kind of like a uh, he's he's taking the whole caesar thing more literally like like a roman type of historical thing than he is actually being like an actual leader and i guess that's his plot point but like they go away with him so fast and they don't really develop a new bad guy for like the apes to to fight against and that to me kind of like just resulted in some weird pacing issues. I, I really thought that they kind of did away with Proximus a little too fast. I'm not sure if he'll come back for the more for other movies in the future, but from not to spoil it, but I don't think he's coming back. I do think that the pacing was a little off in this movie, though. I definitely felt like like about midway through the movie, I started getting a little bit like, oh, this is what I don't like about these movies is when they kind of like get boring and they focus on just like the 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 past stuff they're trying to catch people up and everything like that and as somebody who's already seen all the movies i don't need to be caught up i just need to see what's next so i do feel like they wasted a good like 45 minutes in this movie of just like being boring in a lot of ways i don't want to spoil things i also thought that like like i said proximus i thought wasn't used as much as he could have been used um i do like the main character though i love the environments of this movie everything in the movie is very dystopian it's very like uh, run down. You know, you, you see skyscrapers that are just <sighs> are just covered in moss and shit for monkeys to climb. And it's it's just you can tell the world has evolved or well, devolved into a more ape structure. The movie pretty much opens up with the fir the main three characters, Noah and his two companions that you're supposed to get to know and like. Uh, they're not really in the movie all that much, which I'm assuming they save them for later on, but um, it opens up with them like on like this like uh, this test where they have to get these eggs out of like an eagle's nest and um, you know Noah's the main character because he goes and gets the the hardest ones to get. The hardest eggs that he can obtain, he gets them. And the way he obtains them is really like it's creative and it's fun and it's very like centered around the monkeys. It's really cool. And I, I really enjoyed that portion of the movie. I enjoyed the sprawling environments. I enjoyed the character development that they had here. I thought they could have done a little bit better with Proximus Caesar. Um, but all in all, I really liked the movie. The action is really, really good. Like I said, I don't like it when we have to watch CGI and real life fight each other. I like it when we see CGI everything just fighting each other it makes it flow better in my opinion it looks a lot better and i will say from the moment the action starts about 20 minutes into the movie the action starts 
it's pretty steady. It, it, it's a steady pace of violence and like action throughout the whole movie, which is really good for this movie. And to be completely real with you guys, I don't really know how this movie wasn't rated R. There's a lot of violence. Like there's there's a lot of like kind of brutal violence. Like like you know like some of the apes are executing each other. I th honestly, I thought Dawn and War both could have been rated R. In Kingdom, there's there's blood. Like there's there it shows like pretty intense shit like like it, towards the beginning of the movie i won't spoil exactly what happens but uh some of the apes invade the the hometown of one of the apes and there's it's just violent it's it's just absolutely fucked up like there's they're they're fucking snapping necks they're stabbing each other with spears it, it's 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 pretty intense i was surprised i think this is the best action that we've had in a plane of the apes movie uh, by far, I think this is the most we've had and the nicest we've had it. Um, though, like I said, I think the story and the the focus of the second movie is better altogether. I do think Kingdom is a very close second when it comes down to like the integrity of the series. I think this is a good starting point for whatever they're going to do next. This one does leave off on a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, it's not hard to understand the cliffhanger, but there is a lot that happens, and it, it, it just kind of happens and it ends. Uh, so it is setting up for the next movie, pretty much, which I don't know when that's going to come out. I don't even know what it's going to be called. But I do know that this is a good starting point. And I think people, if, if you really liked the first three movies, you'll more or less expect and get the same thing out of this newest movie, just with more action, I would say. Um, there's less of like an uprising happening, like with Caesar in the first trilogy, uh, and more of like a fight for survival type of thing going on in this one because this one it's it's more the monkeys are hunting each other down and kind of being more human about the way that they treat each other and everything and it's it's kind of the irony of it all um there's some stuff i'm probably missing here but i really enjoyed this movie i thought when we went and saw it it was it was a really good time it was worth the 10 bucks to see in theaters um i wouldn't I, I wouldn't say like see this like specifically in theaters, but if you have a nice home system where you like can watch the movie on a really nice screen, I think it'll look really good and I think you'll enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of good elements in this movie. There's a lot of good action. The character development's pretty good. Gets a little bit bad pacing midway through, I would say. Uh, kind of does the thing that War for the Planet of the Apes does where like the main character gets imprisoned and he's kind of stuck in like one spot for a while and that kind of stuff slows the pacing down. But all in all... Um, there's a couple little moments that were like, what? You know, but like it still was fine because the movie altogether was really good. So I'm going to give it like an 82%. Um, if I had to rate like Dawn, Dawn was like an 84 or an 85. So this is a very close second to me. Like I said, it's really just preference. I just thought that the the overall story gets a little lackluster a little bit there towards the middle. But this is the beginning of a new series of these movies. So uh, expect there to be a cliffhanger, expect there to be five more movies, nine more movies. I'm not sure how many more they want to do, but all in all, um, I thought I'd give my opinion on it because I've been thinking about it. So, uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you enjoy the movie. Okay.